Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know where to find us. Your trusted source for HIV testing. With over 4,500 testing labs across the United States. That's right. And we know that staying informed is super important, especially with all the new developments happening in HIV research. That's for sure. Speaking of new developments, there's been some exciting news about a potential breakthrough in HIV vaccine research. So that's exactly what we're going to be diving into today. Yeah, it's a pretty fascinating development. You know, we've been fighting this virus for decades now, so it's really remarkable to see this kind of progress. It really is. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, mm. I think it's important to remember why creating an HIV vaccine has been such a challenge in the first place. Mm. You know, what makes HIV so difficult to target? Well, it really comes down to HIV's incredible ability to change and evade our immune systems. You see, HIV mutates constantly, so it's always changing its appearance, which makes it really tough for our immune cells to recognize it and attack it. So it's like, it's like trying to hit a moving target. Exactly. It keeps shifting and dodging our defenses. And to make things even trickier, HIV directly attacks the very cells that control our immune response. These are the CD4 T cells. They're like the command center of our immune system. Right. So when HIV attacks those cells, our defenses are seriously weakened. And that's why regular testing is so important for everyone listening. You know, early detection through an HIV RNA test means you can start treatment sooner. And that can be a huge difference in how the infection progresses. Absolutely. The medications we have now are incredibly effective at suppressing the virus, but they work best when started early. Right. And this new research, you know, it brings a real sense of hope for even more effective prevention strategies down the road. Okay, so let's get into this promising research. The key seems to be something called broadly neutralizing antibodies. So can you explain what those are exactly? Sure. So broadly neutralizing antibodies are kind of like the superheroes of the immune system. Okay. Unlike regular antibodies, which usually only target a specific strain of HIV, broadly neutralizing antibodies can recognize and fight off a wide range of HIV variants. So instead of targeting just one enemy, they're like taking on a whole army. Exactly. They're incredibly powerful. That sounds pretty amazing. But if our bodies can make these super antibodies, then why don't they do it naturally? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It's one of the biggest mysteries that researchers have been trying to crack. You see, our bodies actually have a kind of resistance to producing these broadly neutralizing antibodies because they kind of resemble some of our own cells. And there's this risk that they could trigger an autoimmune response where the immune system starts attacking healthy tissues by mistake. Wait. So our own bodies might fight against producing these antibodies that could protect us. Yeah, it seems kind of counterintuitive, right? But that's the challenge that researchers have been up against. They needed to figure out a way to teach the immune system to make these antibodies without setting off any internal alarms. And that's where this new research comes in. OK, now we're getting to the good stuff. Yeah. So how do they manage to train the immune system like that? Well, they zeroed in on a particular weak spot in the HIV virus called the Membrane Proximal External Region, or MPR for short. Think of it like a chink in the virus's armor. MPR, got it. But why is that region such a good target? It turns out that the MPER is a prime target for those broadly neutralizing antibodies we were talking about. But those antibodies have to be shaped in just the right way to lock onto the MPER, effectively kind of like finding the perfect key for a very specific lock. Oh, that's a good analogy. Yeah. So how do they figure out the shape of these antibodies? Well, years of meticulous research went into studying the structure of those broadly neutralizing antibodies and how they interact with the MPER. And for that, they used a technique called protein crystallography, okay. which involves using x-rays to create images of these molecules in incredible detail. Hold on, x-rays. I thought those were for you know, broken bones, not tiny molecules. Yeah, that's what we usually think of. But super powerful x-rays can actually let us see things at a molecular level. And in this case, they use the advanced photon source at Argonne National Laboratory. It's an amazing facility that produces x-rays that are strong enough to reveal the complex structures of both the antibodies and the virus. Wow, talk about cutting edge science. I had no idea x-rays could be used like that. It really highlights how important it is to have research from different fields working together, combining immunology, virology, and these advanced imaging techniques is what made this breakthrough possible. That's incredible. So we've talked about the challenges and the science, but what about the results? What did this research actually achieve? Well, for the first time ever, scientists were able to demonstrate that a vaccine could actually trigger the production of these broadly neutralizing antibodies that target that MPER region of HIV. That's amazing. And it's a huge step forward because it proves that it is possible to teach the immune system to do this. So it's not just a theory anymore, it's actually been done. 
Exactly. That's so exciting. But I imagine there's still a long way to go before we have a vaccine that's ready for everyone, right? Oh, absolutely. We're not talking about a finished vaccine that's ready to be distributed just yet. There's a lot more research and testing to be done. But, you know, this discovery opens up a whole new avenue for HIV vaccine development. And that's what makes it such a game changer. It's a real turning point in the field. Yeah, it really is a game changer. And there's actually another thing about this research that I find really interesting. The vaccine candidate actually produced something called heterologous neutralization. Heterologous neutralization. Okay, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, can you break that down for me and our listeners? What does that even mean? Sure. So basically it means that the antibodies produced by this vaccine can neutralize a whole bunch of different HIV strains, not just one specific strain. And that's super important because, you know, HIV is so diverse. There are all these different subtypes of the virus circulating all over the world. So this potential vaccine could offer much broader protection, you know, compared to previous candidates that only targeted a small number of HIV strains. Exactly. That's a key part of this whole thing. This is all really promising stuff. So we've talked about what this discovery is all about, but now let's talk about why it matters. So what does this mean for the future of HIV prevention? Well, this research basically gives us a roadmap for developing vaccines in the future. It gives us these specific targets on the virus, and it shows us that it actually is possible to get the immune system to produce these broadly neutralizing antibodies against those targets. So it's not just a theoretical possibility anymore. It's an actual path forward. Exactly. And while it's important to be realistic and acknowledge that there's still a long way to go, this discovery definitely gives us a reason to be optimistic. You mentioned a roadmap. Are there any specific stops along the way that researchers are going to be focusing on as they move forward? Yeah, actually, one really interesting thing that came out of this research was that a lot of these really potent antibodies share a specific gene sequence called VH741. Okay. And this suggests that targeting this specific sequence could be a really good strategy for future vaccine development. So you're saying this vh 74 vas one sequence could be like a master key to unlocking even more effective HIV vaccines. It really could be, and there's already a ton of research being done to build on this breakthrough. Scientists are looking into different vaccine platforms and strategies to try and boost the immune response even further. Wow. Hopefully this will lead to even more effective vaccines in the future. It's incredible to think how far HIV research has come. Oh. It really shows how dedicated and persistent scientists all over the world have been, you know, they've been working tirelessly to find a way to prevent this virus. It must feel amazing to be part of this kind of progress. It really does. You know, it's a reminder that scientific progress takes time and persistence. Breakthroughs don't just happen overnight, but when they do happen, they have the power to completely change people's lives. I think a lot of our listeners can relate to that. You know, living with HIV can be a long and complicated journey. And even though this research might not offer an immediate solution, it does give us a glimmer of hope for the future. I agree. It's a huge step forward. It might not be a cure, but it lays the groundwork for a potential vaccine that could someday protect people from getting HIV. And that would be a massive achievement. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say to our listeners who are maybe feeling a mix of hope and uncertainty right now? What should they take away from this research? Well, I think the most important thing is to stay informed and involved. HIV research is always changing and breakthroughs like this give us real reason to be hopeful. And while we wait for a vaccine to become available, it's crucial to practice safe sex get tested regularly and know your status. Those are all great points. And remember, listeners, the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast is here to keep you updated about all the different HIV testing options available across the U.S. We'll keep you posted on the latest developments in HIV prevention treatment and research. And, you know, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, this research could completely change how we approach HIV prevention in the next few years. Yeah. Imagine a world where an HIV vaccine is widely available that could drastically reduce the number of new infections and eventually even help end the epidemic. It's a pretty powerful vision. And I think one we can all get behind. You know, that's what drives us here at the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. We want to give our listeners the knowledge they need and make sure they have all the resources available to them. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to HIV. Well said. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave our listeners with a thought. You know, how do this research might impact your own life or the lives of people? And it's a lot to think about, but it's a conversation worth having. And in the meantime, remember to stay informed be proactive, and keep listening to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast for all the latest updates. Thanks for checking in.